Okay guys, in this video segment we're going to get into the chapter 12 part of this unit, uh, which is the stoichiometry part of the unit. Uh, we just wrapped up talking about molecular formulas and empirical formulas, so now we need to move on to how do we apply the stuff we've been talking about with moles and formulas and percentages and apply that to the actual chemical reactions. So to do that, we need to talk about something called mole ratios. Okay, In a balanced chemical equation, we've been talking about conservation of mass and we've said things like you know for every one of these you need to have five of these and three of these and four of these now the beauty is this up until this point we've been kind of assuming that this four this three and this five all matched up to being a molecule or a form of the unit so so if you had four molecules of water you needed three molecules of carbon dioxide and so forth but in reality because that relationship between moles and molecules is always the same, remember that's a 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, um, because that relationship is always the same, we can actually apply this and call them moles. So what we can say is, in this balanced chemical equation, you need a mole's worth of propane to react with 5 moles of oxygen to make 3 moles of carbon dioxide and 4 moles of water. Now by doing that, it brings us one step closer to doing some calculations with grams, and it allows us to avoid trying to use that gigantic Avogadro's number in all our calculations. So by comparing them to moles versus molecules, it makes our math easier and makes it shorter. Okay? So let's go through some quick sample problems as we look down here to make sure we get this idea of mole ratios. So if you have four moles of propane, how many moles of carbon dioxide can you produce? Okay? So if, you have, if this was a four, how much of this would you make? Well, our ratio is 1 to 3. So if this became a 4, we know that the carbon dioxide has to be 3 times as much. So for every one of these, we get 3. So four of these, we would need to have 12 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay? Now that one we can do in our head pretty easily. Uh, let's take a look at this, the next example. If I want to make 18 moles of water, how many moles of oxygen will be used? Okay, so I want to make 18 moles of water here now. I want to know how many moles of oxygen that is used. So now we have a relationship between 4 and 5, and 18 really isn't divisible by whole numbers into these. So you probably can work this out in your head and figure out how much that's going to be. But I want to show you on the board the math behind it, because as we get into more complex one of these, we're not going to have whole numbers of everything. So we want to be able to see the math part of it also. So if we take a look at this, we want to make 18 moles of water, and we want to know how many moles of oxygen is going to be used. So let's set the problem up. We know we have 18 moles of water. What we want is moles of oxygen. So our conversion isn't really converting out of moles. We're converting from one compound to another compound. So all we need in here is an equality that matches that. Well, we know that for every four moles of water produced, we need to use five moles of oxygen. Okay? So our math becomes 18 times 5 divided by that 4 for our math here. Okay? Again, you probably can do this in your head, or some of you guys can do that in your head, but we'll just calculate it out just to make sure. So we take our 18, take it times the 5. That's 90, and then divide by the 4, and we get 22.5. So we end up with 22.5 moles of oxygen needed. Okay. Now, can we have a half a mole of oxygen? Sure. That's not a problem. We don't have to have whole numbers for our answers here because we don't need to have you know, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. We can have half of that. So it's fine to have um, decimals in terms of our moles for problems like this. Okay, Now, this process of mole ratios is actually just one small step in a bigger process called stoichiometry. Okay, So if we take a look at our screen, when we're solving stoichiometry problems, you have to start from a balanced chemical equation. That's a must, because we need to know these mole ratios that we just worked on on the board. So our first step in all stoichiometry is balance the equation. Okay, Once you have a balanced equation, you will use a mole ratio at some point in that problem. It's usually the very middle step. Okay, 
Now, when you're solving stoichiometry problems, there's basically three things you need to work your way through. First thing, organize what you know, okay? Um, basically, find your starting point. What information is given to you that you can do to start from? Then, create your proper dimensional analysis sequence. So when working with stoichiometry, the whole goal is to get to moles, okay? Uh, once you have moles, you can use your mole ratios. So every single stoichiometry problem, for every time you do it, your goal is to get to moles as soon as possible, okay? That might be one step, it might be two steps, but you want to get your numbers and values into moles. Once you're in moles, then you can go out of moles into something else you need. And finally, obviously, once you have everything set up, you solve and verify that process. So here's our example problem. You have 25 grams of hydrochloric acid and plenty or an excess of sodium metal. And we want to know is how many grams of hydrogen gas are you going to make from this reaction. Okay, so let's start the problem, let's set it up, and let's solve this together. So first thing you need to have is a balanced chemical equation. So let's read through our word problem again and see what we have. So we're reacting hydrochloric acid with sodium metal, okay? So those we can get down, and it wants to know how many grams of hydrogen gas are being produced. So if I have hydrochloric acid with sodium metal, that looks like single displacement to me. So we can write a single displacement problem. So let's go to the board now and let's work out the problem. Okay, so our first step is to write up our balanced chemical equation. I have hydrochloric acid plus sodium metal, and I'm going to make two products. Well, sodium and hydrogen switch places, so I'll end up getting hydrogen gas produced plus sodium chloride. Now, in this case, the states of matter really don't matter to us. We don't really care what the states of matter are, so I'm going to leave them off because we're working on the mass side of things. However, to balance this thing is very important, so we want to make sure we have a complete balanced equation here. So I have one hydrogen, one chlorine, one sodium, two hydrogens. So I'm going to double my hydrochloric acid, which then requires me to double my sodium chloride, which then requires me to double my sodium. So everything in this is twos except for the H2. Okay? So that's our first step in the problem. The next thing we want to do is we want to write down what do we know about this and what's our process here. Okay, so we know from the problem that we're given 25.6 grams of hydrochloric acid. And we also know that we want to find grams of hydrogen gas. Okay, so the problem tells us that we want, we want to find the grams of hydrogen gas. We know the grams of this. We also know the mole ratio... between hydrogen and hydrochloric acid. So we know that for every two of these, we need one of these. So we have two moles of HCl for every one mole of H2, okay? These are three key things that we need to have as we solve our problem, okay? So if we go back up to the screen, we see we now have a balanced chemical equation. Uh, we know the mass of hydrogen and chloric acid we have. One thing I didn't put on the board, which we also are going to use in our math, is the molar mass of hydrogen. So I've pre-calculated the molar mass of hydrogen, the mole ratio, and the molar mass of hydrochloric acid. These are all key pieces of the puzzle that we're going to have to have to solve this problem. So our next step here is to set the problem up and let's solve for actual grams of hydrochloric acid. So, here we go. We're going to start by putting what we know, 25.6 grams of hydrochloric acid here. We're going to have to go through three steps to find grams of hydrogen, okay? And you may not know how many steps you need. Uh, your typical grams to grams calculation, so if you always start with grams and end in grams, it's going to take you three steps, almost all the time to do that. Um, if you don't know that, just leave enough room to put as many in as you need to put in, okay? So we have grams of hydrochloric acid, and we want to get to moles as fast as we possibly can. So our first step is to put the molar mass in grams of hydrochloric acid here, 
relate that back to one mole of hydrochloric acid. Okay, and if we go back to our previous slide, we know that the molar mass of hydrochloric acid is 36.46 grams. That was calculated separately. So we can place in here 36.46 grams of hydrochloric acid per mole of hydrochloric acid. Now, once we know our moles of hydrochloric acid, we're in moles. That's a good start. Our next step is the mole bridge, I call it. And what it does is it bridges you from one compound to the next. It's kind of like going to Wisconsin. You know, there's lots of ways to get over there, but the best and easiest way to do that is to all funnel through the 94 bridge to get over to Wisconsin. I don't know why you'd want to go to Wisconsin, but in case you had to go over there for some reason, you go through the mole bridge. Okay? Here's where we use our mole ratio. So we know that we have moles of HCl, so we need to put moles of hydrochloric acid on the bottom and moles of hydrogen on top. This is where it's important to have your labels inside of your work because you know that hydrochloric acid has to get canceled out and you want to convert to hydrogen. Go up to your balanced chemical equation. We have a 2 up here, so this 2 gets inserted here. We have a 1 here, so this 1 gets inserted here because our ratio is a 2 to 1 ratio. So now we've canceled out moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of hydrogen. And then our last step is again to use molar mass. So for every one mole of hydrogen, we get 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen. Okay. So here's our complete setup. We have this many grams of hydrochloric acid. We have an excess of sodium, which that tells us ignore the sodium. It's not part of the math. You have so much of it that you won't run out of it. So what you're going to run out of first is, is this. You convert from grams to moles, mole ratio, moles back to grams, and then solve. Okay. So let's go back to the screen now and watch, we'll walk through the whole process again. So we have three steps in our process. We know our grams. We know our relationships. And then if we do the math and we solve, we get 709 grams of hydrogen in our process. Now, why do we round it off at 709? Well, because we had three significant figures here. Okay, These are exact values. They're a ratio of moles, so they do not count against your significant figures. This value and this value are pulled off the correct table, so they won't count against it either. So you start with what you know, use molar mass, mole ratio, molar mass, back to grams. And if you see the process, everything cancels out inside of here and we get to our answer with our proper label. Okay, guys, that is the most basic uh, of your stoichiometry problems. They obviously can get more complex because we might start you in different spots, but this is going to give you that backbone in terms of solving your stoichiometry problems. Now, we have all sorts of more practice that we can do, so we'll start here in class and work through some more practice with you guys there. Thank you.